This is the first in a series of videos that I want to do showing you how to create textures in both Photoshop and Illustrator. In this particular tutorial, what I want to do is show you how to take a photo without doing anything else to it, bring it into Illustrator, and create from that an image trace texture that you can apply on any image that you want. I'm just going to drag into Illustrator a photo that I took of some lovely cement in our, uh, in our neighborhood. And assuming that I can reach the computer and my keyboard and the microphone at the same time, you can see my little artboard here, and this is a very large image. So I'm, it doesn't matter, but it annoys me. So I'm just going to have, having selected the image, choose object, artboards, fit to selected art. And now my artboard and my image are the same size, and I'm a much happier camper. At this point, I'm going to open the image trace. In order for image trace to be active, you have to have a raster image, and it has to be selected going to click Image Trace. It thinks about it, especially since this is a large image, and that is not a particularly attractive image. So we want to adjust the Image Trace settings. This little almost invisible icon, if you click it, brings out the Image Trace settings. By default, Advanced is unchecked. If you twist that down, you can see the Advanced tabs. I'm going to make several adjustments first, and I'm going to turn off preview because I really don't feel like waiting for the adjustments. I want to ignore the white in the image. I would like to not snap my curves to lines because I would much rather have lines. I want only fills. I would prefer that there be fewer corners rather than more and I would prefer a low path count, as low as Illustrator can manage to do it. I have two more of the fields that I need to adjust, the threshold and the noise, but for this I do need to see the preview. So having set up my basic settings, I'm going to turn on the preview now. Okay, it still looks bad. So we have, let's start first with noise. The noise setting reduces noise by ignoring areas of specified pixel size. Higher values mean less noise. So what happens if I bring it all the way up? Doesn't seem to make a huge difference here because it really can't quite tell until I start fussing with the threshold. Pixels darker than the threshold value are converted to black. If I bring it all the way down, then I don't see anything. I have one little dot. If I bring it all the way up, of course, everything turns completely black. So the trick is to use the threshold setting and find sort of a middle ground here between the white and the black. Remember, we've asked the white to drop out. I would like to get a lot of white in here and much less black. Again, it does take Illustrator a while to think about it. Let's see how this does. Okay, I think I can live with that. So at that point, I can close this dialog box and click Expand. If I click off, you see that we do have a group. If I open my Layers panel, we have one layer, and it's got one group. And inside that group are all of the little itty-bitty shapes that are in this image. What I want to do first is to save off this document so this is a complete texture. I can use this anywhere. I can put it into Photoshop. I can use it against anything in Illustrator. File, 
save as. And I'm going to just let it save with a, an extra letter because I've already saved this particular one. And I'm saving it as AI. OK. Now what I'd like to do is to make this image smaller. So I've got this. And I'm going to just make it a bit smaller so that it fits differently into the artboard. And now pick up a different shape. So let's come over here and draw out a shape that we can manage to color. Uh, let's go into RGB, please, folks. OK, so now we have a green hexagon. I can now take my grouping here and put it over the hexagon, stretch it to fit. That is, if Illustrator cooperates with me. OK. And now we have to go into the Layers panel and fix the order in which the layers are displayed, because I would really like to have the grouping on top. However, what I'd really like to do is to have this texture inside of the green object. The easiest way to do that is to make a copy of the green path, drag it above the group, select both of the objects, bring out the Pathfinder panel, which was supposed to be in here somewhere. Let's see, Window, Pathfinder, and Crop. It thinks about it, and now we have a black texture on this green. Maybe you don't want black. So we go back into the Layers panel and select just the group. Looks to me like it's going to be fussy, which is what happened to me the last time I did this. And what seemed to fix that for me was coming all the way down practically to the bottom of this to find the layers that were not solid. That were not solid black. I'm not quite sure why Illustrator is doing this this time. OK, let's come down to the end of all of the solid layers and assume that the others are probably garbage. So I'm going to select all of those and delete them. I still have some that seem to be in the selected category. OK, let's select those and delete those layers. Now, if I come back up here and select the object, it's still sell it, telling me that it does not know what color it is. And let's see if it will allow me anyway to change the color. I want to change the color to white. OK, we've got that to white. There is another way, however, that we can work with this. What if instead of having this as white, you really want it to take the white areas out of the green object? To do that, we can come into the Layers panel again. And now I want to select both the green object and the white group above it. At this point, I'm going to open the Appearance panel, Mixed Objects. I want the opacity, and I want to tell it to make a mask. Now we have used the white that was in our shape to make the mask, to clip the mask to the shape, 
and this is now really transparent. If I come up and I get another a rectangle tool and I find another color for this, and I then, first of all, I have to remember, change my order in the layers panel. But if I come up here and load the texture and bring it onto the green, you'll see that the mask has hidden what was actually in that original object. And now all we have is the textured area of the hexagon. So now you know several ways that you can deal with an auto tracing directly in Illustrator to make texture. Any f you could use, in theory, any image. I find that it works best with tree bark, cement, things that are textured images, things that have small detail in them. So I hope you enjoyed that. Please ask me any questions if you have them. Till later, bye-bye.